Hi friends, here I am at Mundelein Seminary in Chicago. It's also the University of Our Lady of the Lake. They made a lake here back in the 20s. And I'll do a panorama here for you. You can see it all built at the same time, many buildings. The joke is that if God had an, enough money, he could have built Mundelein. <laughs> well, he did, in a way, you know, it, by the generosity of his people back in the 20s. But anyways, it's a beautiful place. And um, Father Patrick and I are here on retreat. And not really a retreat, it's kind of like a working thing. But anyways, thinking about this week's um, um, readings, the parable of the vineyard, um, in Isaiah chapter 5, it's so foundational to the prophet. And we see that he goes out into the, the group, maybe with an old guitar of some sort, you know, and he starts stringing away at it and starts singing a love song. And people say, oh, wow, Isaiah's in a good mood today. Let's come around and listen. So he gathers around and he... And he starts singing the praises of um, his beloved and the vineyard, which is, um, which is planted. Again, it's God singing to us. And he did all the right things, right? He took the uh, stones away. He dug it. He watered it. He planted it. And... and you know, did everything he could for his, his vineyard. Weeds and all. You know, they took care of it. And then, but what happened? Okay, well, it didn't produce the fruit. And and God said, what, what could have I done that I haven't done? And it said that he, he expected fruit and said he got rotten fruit okay stinking fruit is basically the hebrew word boash <laughs> it sounds like it sounds right uh you got the opposite of what he expected you know and, and it's people are this vineyard he, he uh you know he expected justice you know mishpat is the word instead of that there was mishpat it's uh it's a play on Hebrew words. Instead of justice, bloodshed, you know. And instead of righteousness, zaraka, it's um, zaaka, an outcry. It's the same word used from the outcry that God heard from Sodom before the judgment. So um, Jesus picks up on this and adds to it, saying, hey, you know, the owner of the vineyard sent his son, and still they they plotted to kill him. So we get out of this that Jesus is, God is primarily a gardener. I don't know if you've got a green thumb, if you do much outside or anything, but I really don't, but I try anyways. And I got a little garden, I got a yard, I try to do everything. This is, look at this whole place is like a, uh, like a virtual paradise. I wish you could just, you know, enjoy and, and see it. Because God loves gardens, and that's why we like gardens and being beautiful places. Um, but quite frankly, what we have to do is, uh, you know, the physical life and the spiritual life are so, so close together. The, um, the amount of energy it takes to make anything grow in this, even in this relatively fertile um, area, you know, is so, uh, you know, it's so much you have to do, you know, you've got to get rid of stones, you've got to get the right soil, it reminds you of the parable of the seeds, you've, um, you've got to water it, um, uh, you know, you know, spiritually, we have to water our gardens inside of our hearts, right, with sometimes with tears. Uh, there's all sorts of weeds and noxious plants. I mean, <laughs> my dear wife, uh, I was trying to get rid of some poison ivy in my yard, and I got some on me. I didn't realize I, I touched her. She's very sens uh, sensitive to, to um, poison. Now she, the poor thing's got some poison ivy all over her. You see, even our own poison spiritually can 
can po make poisonous uh, people around us. Uh, so, you know, it takes a long time to even get a little plot of land like mine to where I want to get it. I'm not anywhere near it, and it'll be something I'll, I'll be working on the rest of my life. But, you know, you make progress. You, 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 you got a place of chaos in your yard, right? Um, where poison ivy is, where all that stuff is, you know, that you, you don't like. And, you, and, and after a while, you might finally conquer <laughs> that part. And we always go around the yard, and, and there's always things springing up. It's constant, uh, rooting out the weeds by the roots, not just, you know, cutting them off at the tops. You know, it's just a lot of spiritual work. So the gist of all this is this. We got to be gardeners. God's a gardener. There's a very, very, very tight connection between our physical work in the garden and our spiritual work in the garden of our souls and in the garden of our church. So, um, that's some early thoughts about this.